Hey gang, it's time for another Three Blind Mice build-off. Don't go away. Gonna be fun. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, indeed he do. It is time for another Three Blind Mice build-off. And just like in the last one we did, we had so much fun with that, we're going to do the same thing today and, and probably every time we do one, in which we're going to, all three of us, start with the exact same casting. Now, that's the only rule. You can do whatever you want from there. And today we're all going to be starting with the Lesney Matchbox Ford GT. So, with no further ado, let's get right to it. Okay, everybody, here we go with another Three Blind Mice edition uh, in which myself and Time Rider and George over at Hodges Hot Wheels and Diecast are going to be doing restorations of the exact same car, in this case, the Ford GT by Lesney Matchbox. Um, I really enjoy these because just so you understand the system, we come together, we pick a car, and that's it. There are no rules whatsoever. So I have no idea what the other guys are doing. They don't know what I'm doing. We could all be doing the exact same car. Maybe, maybe not. I guess we'll find out. That's part of the fun of it is trying to see how everybody's minds work. Okay, so I noticed on inspection some sort of a creepy crawly made its home inside of here, so I am moving forward, but I am freaked out about it. I gotta be honest with you. Um, let's just hope uh, nothing jumps out and sucks my blood or anything like that. Anyhow, I'm gonna begin by drilling out the rivets with my drill, and once we get those the little flange pieces off, we can pop the base off and see what we have here. Okay, so... Uh, standard base, no problem. Axles and wheels, gotta go. Okay, can't can't use them. They're go they're gone. So doesn't matter what condition they're in. I'll save them for later. The interior, eh, really boring. Not a lot of detail, but it's gonna get some work. Uh, a tire, found one of the tires. Always nice to have extra tires. There we go. I have something good. Ooh, there's that bug. Ugh. Ugh. What is that? Ah, oh, God, that's so creepy. The only thing worse would have been if there had been something alive in there. Oh, I, I might have just pooped in my pants. Because I totally forgot about that thing. Ugh. Oh, this is so horrible. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Something at some point hatched and probably crawled into the ear of some sleeping little boy where it laid its eggs and turned the little boy into a pod person. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, that just ruined my whole freaking day. Ugh. There's more. Ah, oh, this is awful. Oh, God, I'd rather have poop in there. Give me fecal remnant any day. All right, well, let's drill out that windshield. Okay, so yes, I hope you enjoyed my little freak out. Um, I, I was really grossed out, but we still got to get this car done. So, yeah, the windshield is held in by a little tab. And we're going to drill that out. Being careful not to go through the roof or crack the windshield. I only have one of these, so I don't want to ruin my glass because it looks pretty good. So I'm being really careful here. Get away from me. All right, the car's apart. So thus begins the warm liquid goo phase. Let's get this paint off of this sucker. You know, I watched some guys the other day uh, who were still doing the brush method, and 
frankly, I do miss that in some levels, especially because they had some amazing close-up footage of the stripper doing its thing, which, uh, as you know, I love to see that happening. Anyhow, okay, let's go fishing here into the warm liquid goo, find this body and get it out of here and see how we're doing. Okay, we shook off the excess, we have all our stuff, and we're going to go ahead and head to the sink because nothing's stuck on here. I don't need to brush it right here, so we're just going to wrap it all up, head to the sink, wash it off, brush it down there, and lo and behold, there you have it, a beautiful clean body ready for us to work our magic with. As you know, everything gets the same initial treatment so that I can homogenize the body and get a real good evaluation on anything I have to do. This is not going to get a spectra flame or anything, so I just need to make sure there's nothing I have to, to eliminate or repair before I move forward. So I'm just making sure everything's cleaned up and equal before I go forward. I still struggle with it to this day, but I did remember to drill out the post and put some screws in before going to paint, so I'm happy about that. Now we can hit the paint booth for what I'm going to put on here, which is a nice baby blue paint job. It's a, a little mix of Tamiya X14 and X2 white to uh, give me this color, and then I thinned it with some X20 and some uh, uh, self-leveling thinner. And we're just going to lay this down so we can put down the Gulf Race Team livery. My biggest concern in picking this livery is that you're going to end up seeing three Gulf Race cars here because it's really, really famous. Uh, I hope that's not the case. And uh, Time Rider and George generally think outside of the box, so I'm not too concerned. Make sure you're using a booth and, and a mask and, and protect yourself, okay? Um... I put the paint down in my standard fashion with the attack coats, then medium coats, and then I try to lay on the nice, uh, wet, smooth gloss coat. Uh, the main reason is this is going to take a zillion decals, okay? Seriously, one of the most difficult decal jobs you're going to see on anything, let alone a car this small. And so the paint really needs to be nice and smooth so that the decals will disappear in the process. So I'm really trying to do a, an extra good job on the paint job and then after the decals. Then we'll talk about clear coat. But for right now, I'm just trying to get this paint as nice as I can. Okay, so with the paint uh, thoroughly dry, I've been able to come over and start doing the decals that I uh, bought online. And I'll put a link down below for the source for those. Uh, they're very nice. But they're also very thick, and so uh, for this car, you're absolutely going to need Walther's Solva Set, which is uh, one of the hottest solvents I know for decals. The decals on the hood so far, just on that hood, there's six decals already, okay? So it takes a lot of decals and a lot of work, and I actually had to do these uh, one day, then let the car dry, and now I'm back the second day. So I've got my water, I've got my decals, I've got my solvent set, my brushes and toothpicks. And now we can go ahead and do day two. This is going to be, I think, I think it took four days worth of decals. So this is day two. And the first thing I want to tell you is to make sure that you trim as close to the printed image as possible. Um, excess uh, clear material does nothing but get in your way and cause problems. And you'll see here, I kind of didn't think to trim this out. So I'm going to take this little notch out of here and get rid of some more material before I put this decal on. Okay, so after I get the decal nice and trimmed, I can go ahead and take it and give it just a quick dip in the water. And I will tell you, these decals release from the backing paper. It's probably already loose. Uh, that fast so they come off really easy which is a blessing but like I said they're, they're a little bit thick and thus uh, a little difficult to get to conform to all the shapes on this body 
That's why I said you need solve a set. Now people have asked me about this brush. It's called a water brush and it's for watercolor artists, I believe. They can keep it filled with water and use it while they're painting. Um, I bought it thinking I would fill it with setting solution and stuff, but I ended up not doing that. I just like it for the decals. I like the, the bristles on it, so it's, it's the brush I use. So with the decal on the car and all perfectly lined up, we'll gently dab it with solve set and then set it aside to dry and conform to the body of the car. And then we can move on to other things. Okay, this uh, Ford GT comes with an engine under glass. So uh, you can see the engine pretty well in the rear window. So we're going to pay a little extra attention to it. And we're going to start by just hitting it up with the brass brush. Uh, then I'm going to break out the rotary tool and go over it again and get this thing as shiny as we can. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and treat it with a little bit of uh, panel line uh, wash to, to kind of fill in some of the gaps and give it some life and some detail and some realism. And then we'll top that off by putting little dots of black paint on top of the velocity stacks and uh, the engine should look really great underneath that rear window. Okay, so I told you that the uh, um, the wheels were going to have to go. We are doing a wheel swap here. Took me a while to find something that I was uh, happy with, um, but I really needed a more of a race car type feel tire, so. Uh, uh, axle swap is in the works, so we had to ground out to uh, grind out the the uh, hold downs for the original axles and remove a little bit of the base to give us some extra room. And here I am just uh, tacking in an axle tube made out of some brass tubing uh, with a little super glue. And once I get that in place and positioned properly, I can come back in and lock it in with a little bit more super glue and some baking soda and make sure that this is not going to go anywhere. So we're going to have to uh, do a couple of these front and back and uh, then we can move on. Okay, so I've taken the screws out of the uh, body of the car, and I've got a, the axle tubes are glued and dried. I've got one wheel on the axle, and I'm just going to do some test fits before I move ahead to make sure that everything is going to fit. Now, truth in advertising, this car is not going to roll, okay? I have this tire stuffed way up in there to get the look that I wanted, and uh, it was bring it down some... And I really didn't want to do that, or it was, it probably isn't going to roll. So I went with not going to roll. Maybe I could have fixed it, but, uh, you know, at this point, I just wanted it to look the way I wanted it to look. i got to be honest, I was dreading this part, having to touch that windshield, because it still had some smegma from the, the, the vampire egg that was in there. So I wasn't looking forward to it, but I did get it washed off and cleaned up. Um, it, the, it was looking pretty good, so we can go ahead and go straight to Gauzy using my fabulous new onion saver uh, as a container for it to sit in. It's really nice and secure and uh, keeps the, the woolly boogers off of my freshly dipped windshield. I just love this thing. Best thing ever. I highly recommend it. Like four dollars, man. So I'm actually gonna probably order extras. So anyhow, a little dip in the uh, gauzy, and then we'll wick away the uh, residual, and uh, then we can go ahead and put it inside the onion container and set it aside to dry.
Okay, so I probably painted this completely wrong, but I thought it looked better. So I took the interior and I painted it like a royal blue. Forgive the sound of freedom outside. I can't do anything about that, nor would I want to. Uh, they're keeping us all safe. Uh, but I did paint the interior royal blue. I think it looks great inside the car. You'll see it at the end there. I think it looks amazing. Uh, but it probably should have been like flat black or uh, aluminum colored or something like that. Uh, so I painted it royal blue and then I uh, uh, painted a few little dots and squiggles and stuff on the dashboard just to simulate some gauges and that's all that's going to happen with the interior. Now I have dumped pieces with uh, uh, super glue and baking soda repairs on them into my warm liquid goo phase, but I didn't like it. And so if I don't have to, I'm not going to, and I don't have to here, I'm going to turn back to an old friend, the brush, and brush on the stripper, get this stripped, and then get it painted. Okay, I've given the decals a couple days to dry, and so now we can seal everything up in uh, the clear coat. And for that, I use, as always, my Bright Vision a clear coat and hardener. Um, like I said in, in previous videos, I, I go a little heavy on the hardener. It's just the way I prefer it, but, uh, you know, you do you, I'll do me. Uh, it just works out really good for me. Um, once it's all mixed up, I'll go ahead and lay it on, as always, with my uh, tack coat, then medium coats, and then the wet coats where the magic really happens. Uh, once done, this car is going to be beautiful. You're really not going to be able to see where the decals start and the paint begins, uh, and it's going to look pretty fantastic. Then we'll uh, just go ahead and set it aside to thoroughly dry, and we can go ahead and move on. Okay, the base is dry, so I'm able to go ahead and put the, the new wheels into the axle tubes. And uh, the new wheels look pretty good, but the big thing is that they need to be orange. So for that, we're going to turn to a little Tamiya X6, and we're just going to brush paint the centers of the wheels orange. Uh, then we'll come back later and dot the caps with some silver, and that should take care of that business. Okay, so to button this thing up, we're going to start by taking the windshield that, yes, does have a decal across the top of it. And we're going to go ahead and slide the front end into the uh, opening for the windshield because it kind of goes into a little notch there. Then we drop the back down and snap it over, over the uh, post, that the remainders of the post on the roof. After that, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop the motor in. It's got a little hole that goes right over the post. So we just kind of flip that over, slide it over the post, and it goes right into place. Now we can go ahead and take the interior. And we'll drop that down over everything else, like so. And then finally we can go ahead and set the base into place. And then we'll go ahead and secure it with two uh, button screws. Okay, so she's just about buttoned up. This is always a nerve-wracking uh, point of the builds for me, but, man, I think it is looking super, super amazing. Okay, that's just about it. Other than a, a little bit of brushwork, for the uh, headlights and running lights, we 
I think we can call this done, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at the finished product, and I hope you like it as much as I do. Well, there she is, all shined and primed and ready to run. I tell you what, this was a fun, fun build. And it's amazing to me, from what we started with, to be able to get to this, it's just amazing. Now, i got to tell you something here. Seriously, we do not talk about these builds. We decide what car we're going to do and what day the videos have to come out. And so even as I'm sitting here editing this, I have no idea what Lee and George are going to do. Okay? So, you're going to want to check out their videos, but I can't be held responsible if you see four or three powder blue Fords, you know, because I, I have no idea what they're going to do. Now... Inside of me, I know that these two guys are really, really super creative, and more, more than me, I guess. And so I, I don't think they're going to go with something this iconic. I think they're going to kind of come up with their own thing to do. So uh, either way, it's going to be a lot of fun to see how they approach this car. So make sure that you watch their videos. Okay, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to get out of here. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the bell, you'll be notified any time I release a new video. And if you do have any questions or comments, ask them down below. I, uh, I read everything, and I'll try and get back with you if I can. Okay, until next time, I hope this was a great experience for you. Stay in the fast lane, and until next video, be good.